It is the year 1983. You have all decided to go survival camping in the Grand Canyon. Your guide is this aging hippie kind of guy. He wears this like silver charm. Yeah. He tells you, oh, this is very special to me. In the middle of the night, you are awakened by the sounds of a struggle. Your guide's voice, Help! You come upon your guide, okay? He has these giant claw marks across his chest. You can stabilize the guide. You'll have to pull from the tower to do that because you don't have any medical experience uh, primarily uh, in your education, so. Anyone, anyone, please. It's a turn. You're pretty sure that, that whatever this is, it just made you. It was looking directly at me. It's pretty freaky. We need to get back in the raft and, and go down river. There is a shape uh, that's above up us? above you. So you look up, and as you are looking up, you see this creature, and it leaps oh. over the canyon. What? And it locks eyes Not with again. you again. Oh, oh man. Oh. definitely looked at me. It looked at me. Okay. I feel like this beast is looking straight at me every single time, but I don't know why it would be coming after me specifically. What I want to know is why is it looking at you? Why is it looking at me? Why is it looking at you, darling? So, I know things about Emily's background and you know things about Emily's background, and I think that this is probably a time for Emily to uh, maybe discuss a little bit of uh, some of these elements of her background and how this interaction is making her feel. Well, I mean, I was raised in a very religious household. Um, I, I didn't necessarily buy into all of that. Okay. There's a reason you came on this trip instead of doing something else. What is it? Because of uh, the religious upbringing and everything, I know that you know bathing suits and everything like that is, is just not my style. So I wanted to get away from that and kind of mm -hmm. do something completely different. Mm -hmm. And I liked being away from you know any way that my parents could contact me while I'm on this trip. Mm -hmm. But I'm definitely getting a vibe from it that it's something bigger than us, mm. if that makes sense. Is this something that you've run into before we decided to no. take a trip to the Grand Canyon? I've never seen anything like this before. I, you believe me, right? I sure. believe you in that it is bigger than us, but I don't understand what you're holding back here about why it's looking at you all the time. We're not too sure if it's hunting the group or if it's just targeting Emily. There's clearly something going on here and doesn't look like she's willing to really say anything about it, which is disconcerting. Well, whatever this thing is, it's coming after Emily. I don't know, maybe it could take her first instead of us, and then we can make a break for it or something. It's all right. You can tell us. I don't know why it's looking at me, okay? Okay. Okay. All right. So Alice is being motherly toward you. How does that make Emily feel? Hmm. I guess it would make me feel strangely comforted. I mean, I am kind of always seeking approval from that sort of figure. I'm not that much older than you, but I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's tense and weird between the two uh, girls in your raft. <laughs> As you have experienced this strange kind of awkward moment, uh, you, you realize that, that the river has really started to pick up. Um, Ladies, it's, a, it's of, time to focus. There's that sort of... I'm sorry, we can talk about our feelings noise. later, but it's um, rapids are coming. So to successfully navigate these rapids, each one of you is going to have to pull <gasps> one block. All right. So uh, you're on the till, so I want you to go ahead and start. Oh gosh, this tower. The dread. Uh huh. The dread. All right. Tower. So you come across these rapids, and because of all of the the extra water in the river, because it's spring, they are a little bit more swollen, and uh, and and it's a little bit bigger, and it's jostling around an awful lot. How's Pete? Um, I'm holding on to Pete. 
Pete just seemed to have hit his head on what some sort of rock in the river. Oh, um, Pete. And yeah, and no, man. so you are coming around what uh, river rafters call a hole. And a hole is a place where the water flows over a rock and it goes flat down and creates a back current and you have to kick over the hole to get through. It's, it's difficult for experienced uh, rafters oh, and it's going screwed. to be extremely difficult for the likes of you. Especially because now you see uh, along the shoreline behind you a familiar black shape no. uh, stalking down us. on the side <laughs> no. of the of the Good of the morning. well down behind you. Yes. Is is there anything in the raft that's long that I can just break to have something sharp? You still have your knife. Okay. Okay. Um, and now you, uh, you, you've managed to pick up some speed because of the rapids. Okay. Is the, um, is the creature above us still, or is it? Uh, no, it's on the bank, and it makes that noise again, that noise that just comes off the walls and goes straight into your soul. Oh, um, yeah. and, but, it's, but here's a good thing that's happening. These rapids seem to have pushed you very quickly okay. down, and now you find yourselves what appears to be sort of like a cave. I believe one of you may have conflicted feelings about uh, going into a small space. Who is that? That's me. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, so it's looking at you and you're afraid of small spaces. Right, right. All right. Okay, well, Maddox doesn't have problems going in small spaces, so I'm going to ask ask you to to keep tilling towards the cave. Oh, don't do that's it. that's okay. Don't do it. I... Well, what is our option if we don't go into the cave? Do we just keep getting chased by this thing? As is it far keeping, as you can tell. Is it keeping pace with us? As it seems it, as to it be is? toying with you. It seems to be okay. staying just far enough away from you. I'm... I'm voicing my concerns to you very quickly. Yeah. We should probably okay. haul so you're into just there. steering it. Okay. I start kind of panicking as soon as okay. we get. So the current pushes you uh, down into this sort of small, uh, sort, sort of like an overhang, and you see that it's like the water has been eroded under, you know, the water's eroded the rock underneath it. And as you come sort of like around this bend, there's sort of like a sandbar where you can sort of push the boat up onto the okay. sandbar if you want, and, and potentially kind of make like a, uh, make a camp. I'm sort down. of sort of situation. But we're there. still in the cave, right? Um, yeah, I mean you can see yeah. the other end of it. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm feeling sleepy. I I'm in favor of setting up camp. All right. Ah oh, man, I wish I had a few more beers. <laughs> <laughs> you still have you do have your beer. I'm just gonna down okay. it, crunch it, chuck it in the river. Screw environment at this point. <laughs> um, you're not like as manly and as beer holdingly confident as you may think you are. Right. So you just watch this guy basically crack a beer, kill the beer, and then just like uh and and fall and fall asleep. So who of you plans to take the first watch? I'll take the first watch. Because right. I don't wanna I don't feel comfortable in here. Okay. Okay. All right. That thing is looking for you though. Well then I'll be aware of it. <laughs> well, so she's asleep. You're having the, the watch. You're having a dream. What is it? The dream that I'm having is me going and visiting my ex-girlfriend who has our two-year-old child. And I go into the house and she's actually happy to see me. And she actually loves me again instead of just letting me go and not letting me help raise our kid. And in the dream, you walk past after she's welcomed you back in, into the home you once shared together. Mm -hmm. and, and she's happy to see you, and you go to pick up your son. He, you know, he's, he's here. And you go in and you pick him up out of his crib, and as you pick him up, he, he looks up at you, and he's just, he's got your eyes, and he's got her hair, and he has a mouth full of razor-sharp teeth, uh, and he, Turn, takes his little baby hands and he grabs onto the side of your face and those razor sharp teeth just sink into your face. Oh God. Oh. Okay. And it is now uh, dark on either side of the cave. And, and all you can see is the uh, reflection of the full moon oh, on the river right. yeah. as the light shimmers up the river and right. comes into this cave where you all are. Of course oh, it and is. And we're trapped in a cave. Of course. Yes. 
heat is breathing heavier and heavier and heavier. He looks like uh, he's having a, like a seizure or something. And one of the things that you notice is that pendant he's wearing is beginning to glow. Maybe it's glowing out, out on its own and you are losing your mind. Yes, I am. You need to pull uh, a block to maintain your composure in the face of all of this. Don't fail this. Okay. 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 Huh? okay. okay. You controlling my okay. breathing? <laughs> you're, you're, you managed to. Oh gosh. Uh -huh. Oh gosh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, so you can see that there's an exit. Yeah. Right? And it is clearly illuminated in the full moon. Mm -hmm. And it is enough for you to know that, okay, can. We, we can, can get, get out if we, we have get, to. We can get through. Um, tell me what's happening with Alice right now. I'm fixated on that pendant thing. Uh -huh. Like, what is going on? I don't want it to choke him if he's like seizing up real uh -huh. bad. So I reach to like remove it okay. if possible. Okay. So you take it off, and as suddenly as the seizure started, it seems to have stopped along with Pete's breathing. Oh, oh no. All right, I'm going to look at her and say, What did you do? What did you do? I, I was worried he was gonna strangle himself on the thing. I didn't know, I'm sorry. Okay. Right, I, wa I'm, I wanna, I wanna like have look at what she did with me and I just like looking at it in disbelief that it could do it. Obviously it's tied to the creature in some way. I can't determine if this is something I just need to crush and throw away or if I need to, to just wear it the entire time. When we took it off, it killed Pete. Mm -hmm. So what, I mean, do we, Pete's you hear, dead. You hear <laughs> rhythmic splashing. Uh, in, in the river. Back in the raft. Back yeah, in, in the raft. Where is it coming from? To, it's coming from all around you. All around us? Uh, yes. Okay. You hear it again. Just get in the raft and push off. We'll try to like go fast. Okay, it's now. a cave. It might be echoing. We should just go. Okay. And oh, go the fast. Takes us. Yeah. We'll get in the raft, but I'm. We're not weighed down by Pete anymore. But so I'm. I'm going to take a rock with me. We can't I'm... leave Pete. Pete's in the raft. We should respect his remains. Yeah. Yes. Okay. If you want to find a rock, you're going to have to pull because you can either get a rock or you can just get in the raft and go. I'm going to get a rock. All right. Okay. All right. Oh my gosh. This uh, guttural. <laughs> This guttural growling sound gets, remember you can abandon a what pole you if you think you're gonna die. Rock. This guttural <laughs> sound gets louder we don't have time and, Maddox. Come and on. louder. Uh, the moon seems to be brighter. Oh. Uh, <sighs> now Maddox, come on. Uh, you convince Maddox to get into the raft. He's very, uh, he seems to be almost like Stupidly happy to have like a <laughs> like a like like maybe like a cantaloupe-sized rock. Okay. You push off. The uh, the full moon is above you in the sky. Okay. I'm gonna keep rowing. Uh huh. Uh, you notice that um, Pete's leg is starting to move. Okay. What? I'm gonna put the necklace on impulsively mm -hmm. and go and check on Pete. He's sort of moving like he's like he's regaining consciousness. Yeah. He's sort of like his arms and his hands oh, are no. sort of like beginning to move. A Pete opens his eyes, uh -huh. and these are not human eyes. <sighs> Something's really super wrong. Pete's leg that's moving around next to you rips through his hemp pants, and but it's starting to grow lots of uh, of of fur uh, as he begins to become like this a is beast terrible. of some sort. Someone could reach for that rock. Oh, the rock! <laughs> <laughs> you have that's, a cantaloupe that's, sized that's rock! Are you, uh, is, is Maddox attempt to use this rock as a weapon? I don't, I don't think he could do it. I actually don't think he can do it. He wants to do it really bad. Yeah. Because he wants to save all the people involved here, but this is a situation he's never done before. I don't think he can do it. Maddox is just a dude, dude. Like, he's not a cold-blooded killer. Like, that's not him. It was, used to be Pete. Pete was a cool guy. Why does it gotta be Pete? But he's gonna try. Okay. Maddox brings this rock up over his head, and as he begins to bring the rock down, 
Pete rears up and his hand grabs that rock, oh. pulls the rock out, knocks Maddox to the side. Uh, he stands up and looks at you. Okay. And just with a withering, monstrous yeah. look, and he launches himself into the air off the raft onto the side of the, of the river. And as the raft is pulling away from him, howls. Maddox is left on the bottom of the, of the raft and muttering, I couldn't do it, I couldn't do it, I couldn't do it. I run up and, and hug you. Okay. Okay. And also kind of for protection because he's still over on the side. Uh -huh. so I'm like, okay, sure. Or what are you doing, Alice? I was about to jump out of the raft and then Pete left. So yeah. I'm just, I barf over the side. <laughs> that's what I was gonna say. Okay, um, I think that's fair. I think that's, okay. I don't know if Alice is gonna make it. Um, this is the most peril she's ever been in and probably the furthest from home she's ever been. Alice is thinking that she might make this into a book if she survives. Maybe not like a memoir, but you know, some interesting kind of novel. So the raft is, is cruising down through, uh, through the river. You managed to put a little bit of distance between you and what used to be Pete and the raft just comes to an abrupt halt in the middle of the river. And what's happening is these big, weird humanoid hands are pulling up onto the front of the raft. And as they reach over the top of the raft, what comes up behind mm. them is a monstrous black and gray and brown head with two bright green eyes that seem to glow with like eldritch fire. Right. Um, now Maddox and Emily see this thing coming up to get into the, the right. raft. Yeah. Um, it looks at you yeah. and, and it starts to get close to you mm. and then spins away from you and it comes toward Emily. Um. Um, you are close enough to Maddox uh -huh. that you could pull to get his knife. <gasps> That's smarter than what I was gonna do. What were you gonna do? <laughs> I was gonna reach behind me and grab for a flare and try to shove it in its face. You can do either one of those things, it's up to you. But I'm gonna go with my first instinct. <laughs> okay, all right. It's hot breath is is on you. Okay. Um, it's looming oh, over you gosh. as you pull the flare out. You grab that flare and you uh, you you, you, oh, you grab no. the you grab the cap. Don't you do take this. the cap. You take the cap off the flare. Oh, my okay. On the on the top of it, um, sort of oh, like it was so loose before, and now it's not working. Okay, I'm stopping. I'm stopping. I'm stopping. It's oh, it's gonna fall. If I abandon the pool, what happens? Really bad stuff is gonna happen. But I don't die. Necessarily. Are you sure? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You have to do this pull. Why? You can do this. I, I think you're gonna get you killed. How, how much? It doesn't want to come out. Okay, wait. No, no. It wants to. It's okay. Oh God, no! I'm abandoning. I'm abandoning. This is not working. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> I mean, come on. It's a flare against a werewolf. You manage to pull that flare out. Yeah. You strike the flare, and in your efforts to move it up to this creature, you actually put it into the side of the raft, and it burns a hole in the side of the raft. Um, and the creature leans down, and it puts one of its big claws down on on top of you. Do either one of you guys want to try to try to save her? You got a knife. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm right next to Don't her. Go for that I'm gonna one. try to snatch out of my uh -huh. catatonic state uh -huh. and instinctively help her uh -huh. any way I can. So it's leaning, it's bearing down on her. Oh, jeez. Oh my God, thank you. I'm just gonna try to grab her and go over the side. Uh huh. You manage to jump up. You get your knife into the back of this thing. Oh, oh good job. okay. All right. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Good going. And then grab Emily and roll out of the raft. Okay. They splash out of the raft. This thing rears up and now it turns around and now it's pissed oh. and it turns on you oh. and you have one second to decide what you do. I, what is in my bag? I try and like poke it in the face with the radio because that's all I, that I'm aware that I have. Um, <laughs> you're going to have to pull to not die. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. 
Are you in the water or not? I'm probably She's in the... still in the raft the, that is falling the apart. The floppy carcass of the raft. Oh my... I'm astonished that you managed to survive that. Oh my gosh. Okay, <laughs> it bears, it comes bearing down on you, and you pull out, and you pull out this thing, and as you're pulling it out, mm -hmm. you just lose your balance and fall <laughs> off the raft and into Alice. the... In, in, in the, into the water. You guys don't know what happens because you're all underwater and swimming gargle, and scrambling gargle, away. Gargling. But you make your way uh, to sort of like the shallower part of the water. And when you turn around again, there's the beast. And it's the right beast there. is standing on two legs and Maddox's knife is sticking out of the back of its head. And it starts to just sort of pace back and forth and then it drops down to four legs and it walks around in a circle. Can I do? try to find a big branch or anything around us? Uh, you'd have to pull for it. Oh God, I don't want to pull for anything. You hear twigs breaking behind you. Oh no. So creature circling in front of us, twigs breaking behind us. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh um, no. I'm gonna instinctively grab the pendant. Okay. And hold on to it. Uh-huh. It is so shaky. You, uh, you look quickly to your right and uh, sort of then back down to your left and you see that there's uh, there's some there's some actually a, a, a pretty oh pretty God. a pretty decent sized piece of, of pine wood that as it turns out is kind of the same size and, and, and weight and shape of like maybe like a baseball bat uh, and you reach down and you pick it up and uh, and you pull it back and you and you wield it and where are you I'm trying to find some bush to hide in. Interesting choice. Okay, and you're standing there holding your, you're holding your pendant. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh -huh. just ask the creature. I'm just gonna yell at it. I'm okay, just go look ahead. At it. I'm just gonna go. Why, Pete? At that moment, another beast similar to the one that is now pacing in front of you comes crashing through, lumbering on four legs, uh, and comes running up toward you. Why another one? Really, we have to contend with another one? You want to try to hit it? with your uh, stick, um, you're gonna <laughs> have to pull. You're pulling for your life is what you're doing. Great. Uh, it's sort of like breathing and snorting and, uh, and kicking up dust. But there's no room on the top. How do I scoot him All right, handed? it's bearing can, down you on you. It's the... running up the path. You uh, reach back. Uh -huh. Uh, and uh, I hit it so hard. <laughs> and with superhuman strength, yeah. you hit it in its head and knock it unconscious. Oof. You're confronting the oh monster. Has it said anything to me? Right, it's a monster, it doesn't really talk. Oh, <laughs> uh, monster. But it, it growls. But it looks at you uh -huh. and it runs right up to you oh, and it okay. backs up and it fixates on the bush that, that you're I hiding did. in and begins running toward that bush. Um, and now it is on that bush and now you're pulling for your life. Okay. Oh, no. Can I actually take like a heroic failure and try and like lead the monsters away from my, if not friends, at least my fellow students? You can, why would Alice do that? She knows that she's gonna die at this point. She's kind of figured and she's read enough books that she knows that, you know, there's not a lot of ways that this could turn out. Um, this is real life, Alice. Um, this isn't a story. I, if, if that's Alice what she wants to do, I want to try to save her. Like, if she's, if it's not charging, there's after me, no way for you to know that. That's true. That she's no, it's all happening plan. inside. I'm not yep. saying like I've read books, guys. I've got this. No. Yeah. Like, yeah, you can make a heroic sacrifice. Okay, if you want. I'm gonna make a dash and try to lead uh -huh. the the dudes okay. away. So when you make a heroic sacrifice, mm -hmm. you just topple the tower. Okay. Cheers. Oh! <laughs> wow. Wow, all right. Alice. Well done. Good. You ran into the river. Alice, ex splish, splish. Alice explodes out of this bush where she's been hiding. It runs with her. She leads it off into oh the gosh. river. The next thing you hear is um, Alice screaming. <gasps> followed by what can best be described as a blood-soaked howl. Well, I feel like Alice was not very thickly uh, characterized, and per sort of horror movie tradition, you get a slight attachment to a person, but not really a lot. 
I felt like she was kind of this flimsy character and it seemed like the most appropriate thing for her to do so that the more developed characters could continue. I thought that would make for a better story. And I also just wanted to knock the tower down. Uh, in all of this confusion, the thing formerly known as Pete is gone. We just need to run. We just, just need, need to, to run I mean, forward. We're exhausted, but we just need to keep moving. Yeah, I agree. As fast as we can, because I mean, Alice this... is going to turn into one of those things. Now, here's the thing, though. It's like it, it wanted to come towards me, but it but it didn't. And I have it. Think it has something to do with Pete's necklace. So okay. I don't know. Uh, it seems to make it so they won't attack me. But now uh, I don't know how to share this with you. I don't know how to like you know make this so that we're both protected together. I'm gonna give it to her for the time though. Like I'm oh, gonna have her so hold on to it. So, and yeah, at least for the time. Okay, having rebuilt the tower now, clearly there's no ambiguity, Alice is dead. Oh. Um, and you have elected to push on down the river. What I need each of you to do is pull two um, to survive until the sun comes up. You pull one, I'll pull okay. one, then you pull this one, then a, I'll pull one. Okay. fair plan. So as you work your way down, some of the ground is very, uh, is very uneven and is uh, really uh, uh, treacherous. Uh, you have to scurry up over a couple of uh, like rock cliffs that are up above the river. Did you use two hands on that there, oh. Captain Cheats a lot? Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, you want yeah. me to put it back? No, no, I just want to make sure that everybody knows that I saw you do that. Um, <laughs> you are, you're making your way uh, along the banks and uh, you can see that uh, the moon is still incredibly fat. The moon almost looks like a blood moon, which huh, is weird. Right. Because uh, it really shouldn't look like that. It's because blood was spilt this night. Yep. Oh, it just slid and, right out. Right yeah. there. And as, uh, as you, you go on uh, through the night, uh, you finally reach a point where you simply cannot continue. Um, I'm so exhausted. Uh, so uh, you find a spot where you are going to make camp. Okay. I guess I'll do first watch. Okay. Okay. I'm pretty exhausted. So, I didn't take a nap before. Okay. So you take first watch. I'd say probably an hour goes by, mm -hmm. and the sky is lightening a little bit. It's still dark. You hear labored rhythmic breathing. Labored rhythmic breathing. Mm-hmm. Uh, coming from... Coming from near the river. Knowing that I've seen everything up to this point that could possibly be crazy, I will stoically go investigate it. Okay, you head down, and uh, what you see standing in the water is a trio of creatures uh -huh. looming up out of the water, uh -huh. and one of them immediately springs uh, out of the air and comes toward you. Um, <sighs> Alice. Hi guys. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, make. Hey guys, how's it going? I'm a werewolf now. Make a pull, please, right. to avoid being uh, attacked. Ooh. Uh-huh. Um, Alice, make a pull to leap up and sink your fangs into the face of that tasty human. Oh, geez, my hands are so wobbly. That might not be a very effective hell demon, you guys. Uh -huh. You're effective. Yeah, I'm a yeah. natural. Okay. okay. Let me just wobble my hands a little more. Uh-huh. Uh, you get knocked to the ground, but okay. not killed. You awaken to the sounds of a struggle, and you <laughs> see that you're alone. What do you do? Um, I, I peek my head out of the bushes, and I don't make any noise. Uh-huh, all right. So you see that Maddox is down, surrounded by these three big, terrifying creatures, and 
One of them is on top of him, and uh, and the other two are are sort of like pacing back and forth, really agitated. I run out of the bushes, clutching the pendant, and yell, "Stop!" Like uh -huh. it's gonna it's gonna work. Yep. Totally. Okay. Um, and uh, Maddox, why don't you pull again to see if you can throw this werewolf off of you? Okay. And then I want to run towards her. If I hear her scream, uh -huh. I want to run towards yep. her and hope that the protective field of the pendant <laughs> will hold us. <laughs> No, no. Yeah, no. so you are trying to kick this thing off. You kick and you fight like you've never kicked and fought before. And, uh, and... Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! The claws of this creature just Flay oh, no. the skin <laughs> from Maddox's body. No. And Maddox, in the final moments of his life, is presented with this vision in his head of his ex girlfriend and their son and him together in Central Park. Okay. All right. It's a, it's a, it's a nice way to end my dying breath. Maddox falls to the ground. Yes. And the beasts. Counts. Okay. And they begin feasting. Feasting on him. Okay. They are not interested in you at all. I turn and run. I mean, what am I gonna do? Yep. You're out of there. Okay. About a day and a half later, you have run down this stream. You have not seen or heard these things since you saw Maddox fall. No. You make your way downstream uh -huh. and you see the, the landing for the ranch. And you get there, there are park rangers and state police and EMTs and they bring you in. Uh. And you quite frankly sound a little crazy. You babble about all of these things. And in the film of this, mm. We come in on Emily as she's saying, I survived, I survived, I survived. And then we pull back from Emily's face as she says, I survived, I survived, I survived. And she is in a state mental hospital where she has been committed for the murders <laughs> of Pete the Guide, Alice the English major, <laughs> and Maddox, the fashion designer. That's awesome. It was me. I killed them. I'm in a mental institution. Oh, yeah. And she just clutches a pendant around her neck and says, I survived, I survived, I survived. Roll credits. Yeah. Beautiful! <laughs>